Good evening ladies and germs. It's been a little while since I've done an instructional skate video. I'm in Fayetteville, North Carolina. Today is April the 14th, Saturday. Uh, weather is very nice. I've got some custom boards that I'm going to show you. First is this uh, In Search of the Greatest Skate. Uh, it's a never-ending quest, right, for old school skateboarders to find the perfect stick. I've been I haven't really ever found exactly stock off the shelf boards that I like to ride myself, so I end up having to customize and, and build them. This is an Arbor Bogart made of bamboo, laminated bamboo. I'm thinking, uh, I'm not sure if it's bamboo all the way through. Bamboo on the top and bottom, I think maple maybe in between. It's 33 inches long, which is a good in between size board. If you do long boarding and short boarding, I find 33 inches is a nice compromise. What's interesting, there's a nice graphic on the, on the belly. What's weird about it is it has this camber like this. So you have your normal kick, but you also have a camber which is normal and slalom riding, but the board has to flex to make use of that uh, camber. You got this, when you flex into the turn, the board flexes down and then the camber pops you out of the turn, gives you speed. This board is so stiff with the bamboo, it doesn't have any camber whatsoever. So it's a, a bit of an anomaly. It took me a while to figure out how to set it up. Ended up with Tracker Fast Track Reverse Kingpin Trucks. That's the only reverse kingpin truck that Tracker makes. Uh, it's yellow, it's got a very lightweight base plate. Uh, the, the Randalls and the Paris and the Grizzlies are more common reverse kingpin downhill longboard, but uh, I like tracker trucks. I use trackers RTS and RTX exclusively on my short board, so I wanted to, to try the tracker product. They again didn't work stock off the shelf because the red bushings and the, and the fast tracks are too stiff. So you got to spend another 20 bucks to get the Illuminator blue bushings that are soft enough to give you some uh, turning ability. I did flip the hangers on these. Like all longboard reverse kingpin trucks, you can have them more vertical for speed, stability going downhill, or you can flip the hanger, it pulls the wheel back a little bit and you can get more carving ability. Uh, this turned out fairly nice. I had originally 66 millimeter 83A retro zigzags which felt to me a little too small and a little too hard because of the stiffness of the board. It doesn't give on the concrete. You have a tendency to slip more. So I needed a 70 millimeter. I like the, the retro zigzags a lot. These are not retro. These are reflex. I don't know what the difference is between the ABEC 11 retro and reflex zigzag, but it's the same thing basically. 70 millimeters is a little bigger and 70, no, 80A. Soften the durometer just a little bit. I like 8386 for street, which is what the original Road Riders were. 85 to me is a, that's the, the perfect in between. Wanted to slow this board down a little bit. Wanted a slightly bigger wheel, so that worked out well. 70 millimeter, uh, 80A green, uh, and it uh, complements the color. Also, that when you put a board together, it's not just that you want it to ride well and be. Um, functional for your style. You also want it to look good so that uh, a kid would want to buy it. Uh, so it turned out okay. I mean, for this particular board, I think this is the best setup that you could ever get. I'm not sure that I'm going to ride it very much because of this the weird camber. Uh, you have to get used to it, but I'll zip around here. thing about these... Uh, tracker fast tracks they're like Bennett's they don't turn a whole lot until you really clamp down on them and then when you clamp down they pivot and they turn which is not my favorite for carving that's good for slalom carving you like something that's a little easier turning but it also gives you the stability if you wanted to go down I wouldn't go downhill on this board because you're sitting on the back of a whale so it doesn't make any sense to me you know why they cambered and used this this bamboo, I bought it because I thought it would be a good choice. It really doesn't flex. Maybe it does a little bit. Maybe over time, if I weigh 300 pounds, I can get the fucking thing to flex. But um, maybe, maybe it does a little bit. Um, but it's set up right. Uh, 
now it's a pretty good riding board. So that was a small success, Arbor Bogart. What I got next is a series of three custom boards that I made that were all from a Gordon and Smith Bowl Rider reissue, which was about 2004. Uh, Gordon and Smith, Larry Gordon, and I think it's his daughter that took over the company. My first original old school stick when I got back into skating was a Team Rider reissue. But I found the shape was too big, so I cut it down to the shape of a uh, Stacy Peralta warp tail. Uh, reissue, I had that. It's a little too short, but the shape of it is good. It's thin, so I just basically laid that uh, warp tail on the top of the Team Rider and traced it out and used a saber saw and cut it down. Uh, that board, unfortunately, I rode, uh, which has got me got me back into skating, and it's where I kind of learned to finally get up to vertical. Got lost when I was flying back from Sydney, Australia. I had to check it underneath the plane at the last minute, and it didn't put my name on it, and then I missed the flight, and then it just basically disappeared, which was a great disappointment. Now, it's been over two years ago. It took, it's taken me this long to 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 re um, to replace that board. Um, so when the Bull Riders reissue started popping up on eBay. I bought three of them because I got them all for good prices. This is the original shape of the of the Bull Rider reissue. I didn't change it at all. All I did was strip off the crappy looking uh, color. It's a wood, uh, like purple or green kind of wood uh, pattern. It's not the real wood though. They something they put on there. I stripped that off so that I got the natural color. This is bow tough fiberglass on the top and the bottom. It's very thin, very, very thin, but good quality fiberglass. And you have um, three plies of maple. So this is thinner than the Team Rider, which is better because it flexes. Um, didn't do anything to it, except for that I painted the bottom and put the tracker sticker on it. It flexes, which is nice, because I always wanted the Team Rider to flex a little bit more. Uh, so this do does have quite a bit of flex in there. Um, for me, it's it's good, you know, for somebody with big feet. It, it rides almost exactly the way my original custom did, but it's a little bit too wide. Uh, I left it though. I, did, I said, well, this is the shape, and it looks good the way that it is. If I would uh, want this to be custom, I would trim this down a little bit so that your toes hang over the edge, which gives you more control because the arch of your foot uh, it covers the, the the width of the board, and you don't have all this excess. This is good for somebody uh, less skilled, but it's, it works fine. I wanted to leave it because it looks nice. Because it's slightly wider than my custom that I used to ride, you couldn't use the 106 millimeter RTS trackers because it wasn't quite wide enough. So um, that was the problem. I set this up with the 106s and because the board is a little bit too wide, that truck was not, I had to go up one increment the next thing that you get from Tracker, for some reason, they go from 106, which is what I ride. It's about the same as a full track. Uh, the next size you get is 129 millimeters, 139, 149. So I went 129. Uh, there wasn't anything in between. It would be a, a nice if there was a 16, but we had to go up. Uh, so wider truck is more suitable for this wider deck. Still, uh, I feel like the wheels need to be um, less wide. These are still a little wide, they stick out too much over on the sides, but um, these are what I finally ended up putting on this board were some Custom Bones 3's uh, dub cons. They're 85A. I wanted a set of dub cons that I could ride, uh, which, which are good for transitions. A dub con, you can see, is a double conical. It's rounded here and it's rounded on the back. So if you're riding a pool and you can get up to the, uh, to the uh, coping, where you have this overhang because it's rounded on the back of the wheel lets the, the wheel go over the, the coping better. So that was the whole original. This was the most popular shape back in the 80s for a very long time. Uh, double conical. It's rounded here so when you go up a transition you have a smooth edge that helps you uh, uh, whatever the word is go across the transition. So I wanted to try these and uh, they seem to work good. I put uh, an RT X on the front, 
which is the looser turning uh, tracker truck. And I put an RTS on the back, which is the slalom, which is a tighter turning. This is what they suggest so that when you do slalom, you have a looser turning front truck and you have a very sharp turning back truck. And, it's, and, and it turns out it works nice for, for carving. Uh, normally I ride two RTS, but uh, I changed that up. I got two, two boards now, or maybe three boards. Yeah, that have a, an X on the front and an S on the back. Uh, anyway, so this is one red bones threes, RTX, RTS in the back. R original team rider with no modification to the deck. Rides good. Um, all around, good board for carving. Bones 3s are very nice. It's 85A is the perfect, uh, again, the perfect um, urethane durometer, I think, for the street. Um, so that's one. Not to get too long winded. Now, the second one, custom, also made from the GNS Bowl Rider reissue. Here's the same exact deck, but I customize it, I cut it down to so this. As you can see, slightly thinner than the original bull rider shape, which I like better. Um, tail uh, basically is the same, and, and I pointed pointed the nose off a little bit too. Um, so this is going to be my main uh, board that I use for slalom. What's cool about this is this is a tracker RT truck, but with a split axle. This is the, the coveted holy grail of slalom racing. I think in, Independent is the first one that put out a customized truck like this that basically takes your regular hanger uh, and then you can see how the wheels are on either side of the kingpin and so that gives you much better traction rather than the wheels here. As you can see kingpin is here the wheels sit back. So this gets your wheels right over the top of the kingpin. You got four copper uh, brass spacers that you can change the axle length. I use all four to get it the same size as 106. This is the first time I've used this though, so this is a perfect uh, slalom back truck. This board uh, flexes. I did put rails on it. Um, I didn't have rails on this because you want the flex out for the slalom. I don't know. It, it needed a little stability. In a board I ride, I like to have rails because you can carry it. It goes like this. Uh, here again, it's got the RTX front truck. So a looser turning front truck and that great split axle on the back. These are Bones bushings, yellow, soft, and I think they're the, the best because they rebound really fast. The, the stock tracker black bushings are good for carving. It's, uh, what do you call it, it's like uh, hourglass bottom cushion, uh, but I want it to be able to go fast and to turn sharp and to rebound quickly. I haven't even really ridden this board, but I think this is what's going to become my main stick now. Turns uh, nice and sharp. ends up being a little bit longer as a result of the wheels being pulled forward because of the split axle. So you have a little bit more tail back here, which I'm not quite used to. I like a fairly short tail. I don't know. I like to get my weight back there. This is, so it makes this quicker. This is a very nice board I'm going to use as my main stick. That's number two of the customized Bull Rider reissues. Here's the third one. Same exact reissue deck as this. This was the original shape. This is what I cut it down to. And this shape, shape is the Jimmy Plummer Z-Flex shape, right? Which probably may be one of the most popular shapes. I don't think it's very well known in the new school today, but uh, that Jimmy Plummer, there were reissues in wood, and then the Holy Grail of the Z-Flex, which I have three of these now, which is great. 
is I got the fiberglass, extruded fiberglass, Jimmy Plummer reissue, that's where I got the shape from. I changed the tail a little bit and I gave it a diamond tail, which uh, is very functional for doing 180s in freestyle. The original Logan Earth Ski wood solid oak had that diamond tail on the back. I didn't understand it back in the day in the 70s. You're looking at that piece of wood that was uh, shaped like a torpedo. It was very pointy in the front and that uh, diamond tail on the back. The diamond tail is functional because it allows your foot to hang off the back of the board, which is great for freestyle. You have just right there, and the, the, like this, your foot is going to hang off of that, that flat edge, which is great right nice in that corner. The tail is really short, so i got to work a little harder with this board. Um, but that tail is better for freestyle tricks. And the other obvious thing that you can see is it, it's shorter. Not a lot shorter, but uh, at least two inches shorter than the original bull rider. The reason for that, which is also good other than the plumber was short like this, is, uh, it's better for freestyle because it's shorter, your shoulders are squared right over the, the board. So instead of being out like this, it's uh, the perfect length. Like so. If I want to do endovers, I can get both my feet on the ends of the board. I'll see if I can do an extra one. more comfortable on this board at the, at the moment because I've been riding it for over six months and the short is good because it fits in my suitcase when I travel I work on cruise ships I play piano so I travel all over the place this fits right inside the suitcase no more trouble with airlines giving you a hard time because you're a skater a skater is not skating is not so popular in Europe in Asia where I just came back from for a month didn't get to do any skating there at all in Singapore, Okinawa, Shaman, uh, Hong Kong, China. I really wanted to get out and spread the skate love but didn't really get a chance to do it. Uh, so this is a freestyle. These are both just two RTS 106 millimeters just which is I've always ridden on since I started back in skating again. Shorter board, Jimmy Plummer shape. I got rails on here because here again when you carry it around you like to have that it stiffens it up but it still flexes some. Diamond Kicktail works great. Uh, these are my three customs now that I'm going to try to maybe stop. Well, I won't stop building boards forever, but because uh, it's interesting and creative. But boards that you can just be comfortable with and concentrate on riding and have a, having a good time. So those are those three. Had a little bit of a disappointment today. Went to the DeVille Skate Shop in Vietnam. Bunch of guys skating in the front. I wanted Jamal, the uh, black guy that works there who used to ride on a team. He was in the armed services in Honolulu. Uh, knows some old school stuff. He likes me, but um, I walked in there today hoping for t to get them to put grip deck on this. Uh, this is a 38 inch vertically laminated pintail Gordon and Smith uh, that you're supposed to ride with this camber, but I flipped it over and I like to ride it with a rocker, but I needed to get grip deck on the front. I waited and I waited and nobody came and they obviously weren't interested in doing my grip uh, job for me. Which made me go, you know what, I, I'm not really competitive but I like to stay on the top. I know what I'm talking about in terms of old school skates. I'm not really interested into the new school. The boards are boring. I, I like the tricks that the kids do but uh, little teeny wheels and indie trucks and just a popsicle stick is pretty boring. It's much more interesting to deal with slalom and the old school all the different uh, trucks, wheels, combinations uh, that, you know, covered nearly 1950, 50, 60 years of, uh, of American cultural history. Uh, so anyway, I didn't get to uh, get this grip so I can't ride it. It's not all so interesting. This is uh, basically is going to be a Bennett Vector reissue truck, which is okay. It's a, again, it's one that turns when you put your ramp down on it turns really sharp uh, but it's a good slalom truck it's got the super soft original Bennett red cushions in it and these are OJ threes now I got original OJ's OJ twos and then these are OJ threes 
uh, very different. The OJ2s are double conicals. It took me a long time to find that uh, vintage set of wheels. I uh, haven't put them on a board yet. Uh, so eventually this Bennett Vector will go on this board using a, a rocker and two soft riser pads. And uh, this is a very good um, flexing long slalom board where you can turn sharp, sharper than, a, than whatever. Uh, it's nice. So anyway, that's Reikley. That's my first video I've done in probably a year. I put two videos on the internet of me skating in these skate parks all over the world, put some original music in there, and the young kids uh, laughed at me. <laughs> said it's boring because all I'm doing is just learning how to, to ride the bowl, old school, not doing tricks and stuff, but just trying to learn how to, to do the surf skate. Oh, I've got one other thing I'll pitch on you. In terms of uh, the definition of what a carve is, a lot of guys say, oh, what you, when you carve, you're in a pool. And because the pool is round, if you don't really turn, you just go, and because the pool is curved, it, it pushes you around. Some people say you carve because you're going down like a mountain, you're skiing, you need to slow down or stop, so you turn, and that's what makes you slow down, that's a carve. Carving is uh, like water skiing. You're in control, you draw the line, and you carve the water. But when I first started out, I, I didn't, I could do it, but I didn't really understand the principle of it. And really where it comes from, the Z-Boys and the Bert, the Bertelman turn that they learned to do on their skateboards comes from Cy Coleman. And it's the Coleman slide. That's what they're doing. That's what the Bones Brigade figured out how to do the Coleman slide. And it basically revolutionizes the way you skate. Um, I can't really do it yet because I'm stiff. I'm 49 years old. I'm an old man. My joints are stiff. Uh, but the principle of it is this turn the board many different ways. When I skate on the bike paths, I say in Key West, you know, big huge cement sidewalk that goes all along the beach, I get into a groove and I like to steer the, the board with my front foot. And I do it like Stacy did who used the ball of his back foot on the tail of the board, you know. I like to do that with the front foot. Um, as you're going along, Here's the ball of that foot, and just by barely putting pressure on the right or the left side of the board, you can turn effortlessly without having to lean to lean over the board. You just use that front foot, use the ball of it, and you put weight on either side of it. That's that's the way I like to do it. This is bass backwards for wanting to skate any of what I've been trying to learn to do, which is pools or ramps or anything. You got to do the you have to do it with your back foot. Period. This is what I've learned, so I have to change my style somewhat. I don't enjoy it so much. You can easily steer the board like this, right? So with your front foot. Like when you surf, if you watch surfers, they don't keep their feet in the same stance. They walk all over the board. They, they hang 10 off the front of the board. You don't always like when you're old school skating where you, your foot is going to be in the kicktail and your back has to be all bent, right? I don't, always, I don't always want to skate like that. Sometimes you can skate, you know, however you want. But if you're going to do vert, this is, I've learned this is what you have to do. So the whole thing is like you have to be Elvis Presley. His front foot, the way Stacy would do it was not up over your front truck. It's, uh, I'll hold on my truck here. It's usually about two-thirds of the way back, angled across the front of the board. Like I said, when I first started, I rode with my foot up here over the front truck. But that's not, you're not going to be carving, which is pivoting at the waist to try to get the board. That's really what a carve is. It's not, you can carve, you can do a turn like this, but to get that pivot in your hips. Your knees actually are really together. This is what uh, Cy Coleman did, right? And he's got that back leg bent and laid down almost completely, and your foot is not flat on the back of the board. This is the way I ride. It's like with a flat foot right in the crook of the kicktail. That's what's comfortable for me. But that's not the deal here. You've got to pull your front foot back. It's angled. It's bent. 
And then you get these uh, two jelly legs, right, like this. So you got pivot going at the waist, and now you see as you throw your weight, this is the way a surfer is going to turn on a surfboard. I don't surf, but I've been studying surfing because that's where the style comes from. If you're going to get up to the top of the wave and you're going to do a, what do they call it, a cutback, which is basically what we do when we get up to the top, we do a 180 and we come back down again. I can do that no problem without being a surfer, but the way that a surfer does it is all he has is a fin, he throws his top weight and his arms in a pivot which brings the board around. That's the difference, right? So you don't just do a little 180 pivot on your back truck. It's a much more involved thing where you're throwing your body. I throw my body. And that pulls the bottom half around. Throw, and it pulls you around. So your, your legs got to be bent. You got to be bent. That back leg has to be bent down like this with, pull, with the knees pulled together. Right? And your, and your foot is angled up. So you'll finally watch. I finally figured this out when you watch. I was watching uh, Mike McGill <coughs> skate on his big ramp at home. I'm trying to figure out how they do this vert thing. When you, when you come down and you're getting ready to go back up the vert wall, you watch him cock. You can't just keep your knees straight. When you're getting ready to go up on the vert, you see when he gets down to the bottom, what he does is he cocks down. This back leg bends so that you can throw your weight up. If this leg is not bent, then you're not going to be able to, to, to escape the transition. Um, that's what a carve is. Here, Legs are together. Back leg is bent. Repeatedly. Really tight. Throw your weight around. And that's the way you carve a good turn. I'll see if I can do it here. interesting is a 49 year old fart. I rarely ever fall. The only time I fall is when the shoestring of my van shoes gets wrapped around the wheel. So when your shoe comes untied, it's very important that you stop and you tie it. I almost just did it then, which is a humbling experience because I'm a little out of shape because I haven't skated much in the last two months. And all of this will come naturally when you just kind of get out there and have a good time. Um, 